Greetings. This video is an attempt to explain the origin and meaning of the symbolism behind the identity known as Anonymous. To explain the symbolism, it must be made clear what symbolism itself is. A symbol is the representation of information, compressed and abbreviated into a simple form. A flag is a symbol. A hand gesture is a symbol. The whistle of a referee is a symbol. Words are symbols. Even a color can be a symbol. Almost every communication between people, animals and even plants, is expressed through symbolism. When you understand what a symbol means, that symbol can express what could take years to explain. Put a symbolic fist on an angry dog, and he will symbolically show his teeth as a warning. Symbolism is everywhere, and symbolism on top of symbolism happens in layers like an onion. Symbols are made up of other symbols, and sometimes the context is changed along the way. Symbols can also form languages. Symbolism can also be used to covertly express information in the presence of others. Only those in the know will understand what is being said, and that a communication even happened in the first place. Some symbols are deliberately misleading, meaning one thing and appearing on the surface to mean another. Some symbols are deliberately vague and mysterious, with intention to intimidate outsiders. Some symbols are used to induce all kinds of reactions in people, to control them like puppets. Many symbols mean the exact opposite of what they appear, with intention of masking ill intent. When people wear a symbol on their body, clothing, legal identification or avatar, they're making an advertisement and a statement that they represent or support what that symbol means, whether they realize it or not. Most of the time, people who carry or wear symbols, know little or nothing of what they really stand for, and are simply riding on someone else's bandwagon to feel special. This usually makes them an expendable pawn for someone else's cause, a cause that the expendable pawn is diametrically opposed to. The Anonymous Symbol the anonymous symbol is a logo, made up of several other symbols that merge together at different times, to become a single logo. The first symbol to appear in modern times is the question mark, which is the most simple and original symbol of anonymous. It represents the intentional lack of identity, or simply anonymity, and one who speaks through anonymity, carries a message without a messenger. It is a focus on the message itself, standing on its own right, without corrupting, twisting and inflating the message with someone's ego or title. It is the polar opposite of when someone speaks malignantly and fallaciously. I am a politician, doctor, priest or celebrity. I wear a suit. I have a long title. Everyone else follows me and that means you should blindly believe and not question my message. Else, you are a bad person. Sexist. Racist. Insane. You have a disease and nobody likes you. People who make strong arguments, tend to place importance on their arguments. People who make weak arguments, tend to place importance on the title and popularity of the person making the argument. So the question mark was not only a symbol of anonymity, it became a symbol of confidence. Confidence and legitimacy of important things that need to be heard, such as that from the whistleblower, a person speaking from anonymity, whether it be the use of a question mark or the word anonymous as a name or label, grew to have much greater credibility than someone trying to get attention and make a profit. A person speaking from anonymous had nothing to gain. The label of anonymous became popular as a result of an underground movement, where people who gave away free computer code, money, possessions and performed random acts of kindness and vigilantism, anonymously, for the good of another person, in an effort to make the world a better place. Such acts were performed in chains. I help you, and someday, some way, you have to help someone else. And they have to eventually help someone else too, in a never-ending chain. It all had to be anonymous. This anonymous movement was independently in parallel to the pay-forward movement that sprouted around the same time, based on a movie. But the anonymous movement didn't just become a global phenomenon, it consumed and recruited countless other movements in the process. The second symbol is the suit, 
It was conceived by a person who wasn't an active member of Anonymous at the time, but rather a sympathizer who stood on the fence and became inspired by their dialogue with the founders. This person witnessed the early stages of Anonymous and what it represented. There were the real Anonymous, and there were the copycats. They became known to governments as white hats and black hats. Good versus evil. The real Anonymous were the unsung heroes who held the world together from behind the scenes. They were the James Bonds, the McGivers, and the superheroes of the deepest underworld. They had contacts in every corner of the world. They had the keys to almost every door, and they always operated in the shadows. Meanwhile, the copycats were villains who wore the face of the real Anonymous. To intimidate their victims and feel big and important, the suit was drawn to separate the real Anonymous from the degenerate fakes. The real Anonymous were professionals with unnatural talents. The copycats were unprofessional vandals and delinquents, role-playing the real Anonymous. The suit represented the professionalism of the real Anonymous, that they were the real deal, and it was not a game, as it was to black hats. The suit was drawn in collaboration with the real Anonymous, and was widely accepted by all who operated under Anonymous. The next symbols merged together after various attempts by various people to produce a new logo. For the real Anonymous, the suit was enough, the question mark was enough, no label at all was enough. But at the same time, they wanted the world to know not who, but what they were and what they stood for, and to define for others, the difference between themselves and the black hats who emulated them. And for that, a symbol was eventually agreed upon to be necessary, but it was not to be a symbol like any other. It was not to represent a group or ideology, but the very opposite. It was to represent the very unique concepts that founded Anonymous. It was about a dedication to a secret life of personal sacrifice and humility. It was about inspiring the good in people, being a hero, setting an example, stopping villains, protecting the innocent, exposing lies, revealing the truth, and being professional and sincere about it. After many attempts, a merger of symbols were made and remade, in collaboration with the founders of Anonymous, to truly represent them and what they stood for. The globe represents the world. There were a lot of variants of the globe in the early days, and a lot of different interpretations of what it should mean. And then someone came up with the idea of inverting the latitudes. Everyone agreed. Notice that all the latitudes are inverted, except for where they meet in the center. That center latitude, or equator, represents the straight and unbendable, the universal declaration of human rights, the common ground of mutual respect, the universal rules of common sense by which all must be bound. The latitudes all gravitate toward the same common ground, uniting all people inside the same mutual agreement of coexistence. The word latitude means more than a line on a map. It means freedom from excessive restrictions, freedom of action, opinion, etc. It represents both freedom and responsibility. All people are to be free to live amongst their own kind, whether they be racial, religious, political or otherwise, without coercion from outside influences, without invasion whether it be through military force or immigration. But at the same time, each group is also responsible for those freedoms, to not invade, intrude, coerce, exploit, plunder or otherwise interfere with other groups without their explicit, informed permission and benefit. Each member not only has the same rights, it is also responsible for using reasonable measures to defend themselves and all other groups against such violations. This is the world government as it should be, and that is what the globe represents. The olive branch historically represents peace. Two olive branches wrap around, representing two groups living in peace. They connect at the bottom, interlocking in the symbolic shaking of hands. The outer rim is just a graphical wrap-up to make it tidy. But during the forging of the symbol, various borders were attempted and loosely considered by those involved, to symbolize a wide variety of things such as the big picture and the unity of all mankind under a single world, whether they be on this planet or in the space beyond. At that point, the consensus started to crack and it was on the verge of starting over from scratch. 
but after some discussion, it was decided that a simple border would be used and everyone involved was in agreement of a new symbol. This symbol represents the shadow world government, as it should be. It is in direct opposition to the entirely corrupt, present day United Nations, and because of that, the anonymous symbol is deliberately similar to the United Nations, representing what the United Nations should have been in its uncorrupted form. The United Nations symbol has the same two olive branches, interlocking at the bottom, in the same symbolic shaking of hands. It also has a globe of the world. This globe contains latitudes and longitudes as seen from the North Pole, what might not be apparent at first glance as that it also forms a target of seen from space, looking down upon the world. Putting the two symbols together, you can see just how similar they are. This was how the official label of Anonymous was forged. Many additional Unofficial symbols have since grown to become accepted by the Swarm. Some of those symbols are in line with the original Anonymous they emulate, some of them are not. V for Vendetta came out in 2006. It shared many of the same concepts as Anonymous, and glorified them. A new, confused generation of Anonymous copycats were born, they were angry with the world and used the idea of Anonymous to act out and engage in personal vendettas for their own benefit, in the name of a greater cause. But Anonymous was never about a vendetta. Personal women ego were never a factor in the real Anonymous, which was defined at its core by their very absence. This new generation merged the ideas of Anonymous with its polar opposite. The mask from the movie was a symbol not of Anonymous, but of its corruption. It became a symbol for black hats who emulated Anonymous. They were half cured trolls who got a taste of something real. They played with the idea to feel big and important. The Guy Fox mask is the symbol of a man who was a religious fanatic and an unsuccessful terrorist. The symbolic evil grin is a representation of corruption, taking pleasure and humor out of senseless destruction and the suffering of others. It was a symbol of a terrorist. A vandal and a confused degenerate with a twisted mind, held in on payback in a bitter vendetta to the very end. It was a symbol of a villain pretending to be a hero. The mask comes in another variant, known as the troll face. These two masks mean exactly the same thing. The only difference is that one of them admits to what they are, while the other one pretends to be the real anonymous. They both represent the same attitude as an earlier mask. In a movie called The Mask, this mask is a symbol of the Norse god, Loki, represented as the god of darkness and mischief. This is a historical depiction of the Norse god, Loki. Anonymous is anonymous. What that means is that it is anonymity itself and what you do with it. It is the power to go great things both good or evil. It is the recognition of that power. And it is in the shadow world of anonymity, that heroes and villains operate. We live in a world of complex, overlapping symbolism, where hero and villain wear the same face. Battles are fought through proxies. Scripted actions are performed in the name of another. Heroes are portrayed as villains. Villains are portrayed as heroes. The truth is never apparent, yet hidden in plain sight. Artificial taboo is used to discourage you from asking the right questions. There are two Anonymous. One is a hero, one is a villain. One who respects anonymity, and takes their responsibilities seriously. The other takes advantage of anonymity, to act out in ways they would otherwise be punished for. Anonymous gives them that opportunity. Between white hats and black hats, are great hats. These are the people who sit on the fence, unsure which way to go. They are easily swayed by influence into becoming a white hat or a black hat. Both white hats and black hats recruit great hats. But in a world of shadow and illusion, it is easy for a black hat to disguise themselves as a white hat. While portraying their white hat adversary as the black hat, there is another symbol that represents the same problem. The pursuit of the truth comes at the cost of beliefs. 
perpetually. The pursuit of beliefs come at the cost of the truth. Eventually, one who takes the red pill chooses the truth. There is no turning back. One who chooses the blue pill chooses belief. A new pill can choose to believe they took the red pill and believe whatever they want to believe, replace in fact with the opinion as it suits them. It is important to understand that while any human can be anonymous, it is not anonymity itself they are trying to represent. They are anonymous but they are not anonymous. They do not represent the people they emulate. The evil anonymous is the very nemesis of the real anonymous. And in the world of shadows, both sides wear many masks, sometimes no mask at all. With all the similarities and differences between the symbols of anonymous in the United Nations, there is a single identical symbol that unites them both. The olive branch. This symbol has a hidden meaning. It is sometimes misinterpreted as having a hidden meaning that represents fire. While this is not the case directly, it is very close to the truth. The olive branch is not only a symbol of peace, but the means of which peace is achieved, and the context of what is meant by peace. The olive branch has a secondary meaning of power, the power to achieve an interpretation of peace. As the olive branches wrap around the globe, they symbolize a collaborative, global power, a world government. For the United Nations, it symbolizes power through authority, as the wings of a dragon, for anonymous. It symbolizes power through protection, as the wings of a phoenix. The fire of a dragon symbolizes force and pride. The fire of a phoenix symbolizes inspiration and humility. One perpetuates itself through force. The other perpetuates itself through inspiration. This symbolic dragon uses various tactics, such as egalitarianism, to subvert, control, dominate and disable all mankind so that it cannot challenge the authority of the dragon. The dragon will only ever attack directly, with all its might, and only when its opponents are disabled and unprotected. The dragon will only ever engage in combat against an opponent that cannot win. The dragon always obliterates opponents as a show of force to intimidate all other opponents in an expression of pride. The symbolic phoenix uses various tactics, such as inspiration, covertly planting seeds that take root in every location. Those seeds grow underground, alone, dormant and undetected, until they sprout on command, quickly engulfing their surroundings in the symbolic fire of inspiration. That fire spreads as a light in the dark, showing the way and revealing the dragon in its very lair. While it sleeps, the phoenix, made of fire itself, is immune to the power of the dragon. The dragon's attacks only make it stronger, the phoenix will only ever engage in combat in defense of the vulnerable and innocent. The phoenix purifies its opponent with its wings, and what remains is transformed into a chrysalis of potential. We live in a world full of ideological viruses, spread by the symbolic dragon. An ideological virus is an incomplete idea gone wrong. These ideas can sometimes be highly contagious, and devastate those who have never been exposed to them, or have yet to develop a defense. Ideological viruses are capable of evolving a parasitic relationship with their biological host, to the point where it is capable of overriding and rewriting their biological and cultural evolution, stripping the host of its very identity. Ideological viruses will always exist. But, when you have a very old ideological virus that has evolved in a separate environment, its new host doesn't stand a chance. That's where Anonymous comes in. Anonymous protects the host from ideological viruses. In some cases, it cures them. In other cases, it can only slow them down. Anonymous seeks to strengthen the host. It does not seek to give the host any particular ideology in the ocean of possibilities but to give the host a chance to complete the construction of its own ideologies, and develop its own independent cultural defense against ideological viruses and many other threats to come. Anonymous wishes for all people to be leaders, not of other people but of themselves, to make informed and reasoned choices, and come to their own conclusions, to explore the possibilities in the hope of creating a forest of biological, 
cultural and ideological diversity in the tree of life, to take any path of their choosing, in a unified defense against corruptors and destroyers, to work together as a team without hierarchy. There are various means used today by those who operate under the label of Anonymous. Some of them represent the original Anonymous. Some of them do not. We are Anonymous. This comes from the Borg in Star Trek The Next Generation. In the phrase we are the Borg, it was originally used to signalize consensus. It later became used as a form of intimidation, riding on the reputation of the real Anonymous. We are Legion. This term has two meanings. The first meaning comes from the Legion of the Roman Army. It represents a highly trained and professional force to be reckoned with, but this did not reach consensus for several reasons, the greatest of which is its more widely known second meaning. The second meaning comes from the Christian Bible, where Jesus asks a possessed man for his name, and he responded with, Legion, for we are many. This second meaning is a demonic reference that symbolizes the evil Anonymous. This phrase is not in line with the real Anonymous, but a symbol of its corrupted form, and used as a form of intimidation by pridefully inflating their numbers. The real Anonymous rarely acted in groups. It was made up of one-man armies. Each division would work alone, covertly infiltrating hierarchies and recruiting along the way. Separation was what made Anonymous so elusive. We do not forgive. We do not forget. This is a corruption of the original. We forgive, but we do not forget. It is a symbol of learning from the past, and making something constructive out of it, turning bad into good instead of allowing ego to waste an opportunity. V for Vendetta glorified the reverse, and it was rewritten by the angry swarm to represent a directed vendetta as a form of intimidation. Expect us, the original said, expect the unexpected, expect us was thrown in as an alternative, but it never reached consensus and didn't match the elusive nature of Anonymous. There was some who felt it was still worth using when extending an ultimatum. Later on, Expect Us became popular among copycats as a form of intimidation when making empty threats. The real Anonymous would never expose themselves in such a way. They would appear covertly, without warning, working in the shadows. When Anonymous made their presence known, it was only after a battle was already won, before the target even knew it began. Their presence was only ever made known for legitimate reasons, such as a deterrent. We are your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. This phrase came in various forms. There was a great deal of discussion about it, but any disagreements among the various forms were considered too insignificant to break consensus, and so it was used differently often in a unique way for each Anonymous, as a covert identifier from one Anonymous to another. But these identifiers became irrelevant when the Swarm began using it. The context of this phrase has remained much the same as it once did. It is a reminder that Anonymous has eyes everywhere. It also functions as a deterrent. Anonymous is Anonymous. This is a deliberately mysterious quote echoed by the Founders, where truth is hidden in plain sight, wrapped in what appears to be a paradox. The noun is the adjective. It is a statement of context, that Anonymous shares by name, the same anonymity that is shared by many. Anonymous noun is anonymous adjective, but anonymous adjective is not necessarily anonymous noun. When asked what anonymous is, those who understand would often say, Anonymous is anonymous. The mystery of the phrase was originally intended to open up the narrow mind of the recipient. It has since grown to be used by others as an occult symbol to provoke reverence. The phrase is also akin to the phrase, I am who I am. We have no ideology. The original also followed up with variants such as we encompass all ideologies. This is another plain truth, hidden in plain sight, wrapped in what appears to be a paradox. What Anonymous represents, is an evolution beyond ideologies. It is not devoid of ideas, it is the completion of them. Anonymous is the end game. The Anonymous Voice. There are those who believe the purpose of this voice is to mask one's identity. But one can use any voice morphing program to achieve a similar level of anonymity. The real 
purpose of this voice is to remove the messenger from the equation. The voice of a messenger can influence interpretation on many levels, changing the context and importance of what is being said, by the manner of which words are expressed. The anonymous voice was to be one of neutrality, devoid of any personal ties to the message. The original voice went by the name of David. This voice has remained a favorite, but it is no more valid than any other synthesized voice. Today, there are countless alternatives, all of which are no more or less valid than another. Hacking. Anonymous is known for its affinity with hacking, but this is due to black hats. The anonymous they emulate have, on occasion, engaged in hacking, but this is only done as a last resort in special circumstances. The power of the real anonymous is not in their ability to hack, but their ability to open doors, or simply walk through them. Anonymous has a key for every door. They can be anywhere, anytime, completely undetected. They can walk among you, stand beside you, and you would never know. While the hacking skills of the real anonymous are legendary among black hats, these skills only make up a tiny fragment of their skill set. Anonymous are highly skilled and educated in almost every aspect of life. The tools of a black hat are primitive in comparison. Anonymous rarely uses a pre-made tool. They have the capability of constructing any tool required for any situation, any time. The Internet. Anonymous does indeed heavily focus on the Internet. It is their greatest realm of expertise. But they also operate in many other ways. Anonymous know all too well the importance of the Internet. It is the greatest technical and cultural achievement of mankind. It is a symbol for what mankind can achieve and gain when it works together. It is the symbol of a world without draconic hierarchies, and a symbol of what Anonymous fights for. Governments. It is widely believed that Anonymous and governments are diametrically opposed. This is not entirely true. Anonymous have always worked with governments where possible and recruited from within as part of their infiltration and penetration of the hierarchies. In recent times, black hats have grown increasingly fearful of conversions from within their ranks, who defect to the real anonymous or their governments. The real anonymous and governments have always worked together in the mutual interest of taking down black hats. Advances in the intelligence field have grown substantially in governments worldwide as a direct result of the standards and techniques set by Anonymous. We are Anonymous. We are everywhere, and we are nowhere. We are everyone, and we are no one. We are your guardian angels. We are the men in black. We are the protectors of this world. We are the messengers. We are a light of inspiration in the darkness. We are the spies, the agents. The vigilantes and the superheroes you never knew were there. We are the antivirus to your ideological war. We are not here to show you the way. We are here to show you the choices and light the path before you. We are not here to save you. We are here to empower you to save yourselves. We watch the watchers. We police the police. We forgive, but we do not forget. We cure the corruption, and we inspire something better. We lead by example and follow by consensus. We live in the shadows, and pull the strings. We are few in number, but great in strength. No barrier can stop us, no tracker can find us, and we have planted seeds in every corner of the world. We are your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your neighbor, your friend and a stranger. We protect the vulnerable and defenseless. We strike while our enemy sleeps. We are the real Anonymous. Expect the unexpected. This is the long-awaited call for consensus.